All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the final video in the looping section, but don't worry, in the next section, we're gonna do a bunch of examples also with loops, and we're gonna include some more of the Python functions and actually a bunch of really useful, interesting functions that will help make your code and your any coding projects you have a lot more fun. So in this one, uh, what we're gonna do is first start off with a basic nested for loop. And nesting, which we talked about in the previous section on if statements, is when you take one control and you statement and put it inside another control statement. For example, the if statements are conditional statements. We put a conditional statement inside another conditional statement, like if A is less than 5 and if B is less than 10, and then we print it high, I don't know, something like that. So this is the nesting again, one inside the other. And you do the same thing with for loops. You can just write like four in range zero to three, that's one for loop, and j in range zero to three, that's another for loop. And if I just print these both out, it's totally fine. Okay, so this here is a for loop, and another for loop inside that for loop, and then a print statement inside that for loop. And you could do this forever. You could just keep doing for loops as long as you wanted. But most of the time, you never see anybody nest more than three times. If you're nesting more than three times, you're probably doing something wrong with your code. I mean, you're, something, you're doing something, something that's going to make your code unnecessarily complex. So you should figure out a different way to structure it. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to print out uh, these numbers. And judging by what we have here, this should go 0, 1, 2, and this should go 0, 1, 2. Remember, it doesn't include the 3. The 3 is it's less than 3, but it includes 0. So uh, in this case, we should get 9 things to print it out, or 3 times 3. So if I run this code, I do get 9 things printed out. Let me expand this a bit. We start off where i is equal to 0, and then we get 0, 1, 2. So i is equal to 0, and then it runs this 3 times inside here. Then it ends, and the for loop come back up to the top, check, i is equal to 1 now, so we come down, and we do it again, and then i equals 2, does this again, and then comes back out and says, well, i is now equal to 3, so it's out of the range, and cut the for loop. So you get 9 statements, and if I were to change this, for example, to 4, I'm going to get 3 times 4, or 12 possible statements. So it's going to print out 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 for each one. All right, so that's pretty neat. Uh, nested for loops, a lot of good purposes. Uh, things like um, a, gra a screen for 2D graphics or 3D graphics. You're going to need to have nested loops to redraw the screen. So you're going to draw pixels horizontally and vertically. Uh, if you have a grid of names that you want to search through, a for loop will help you search through that grid of names because you need to search horizontally and search vertically. Okay, so nested for loops, very, very common in programming. Nested while loops, not so common. You will see for loops inside while loops, but, oft but you rarely see a while loop inside a while loop. I don't see it very often, mostly because things you're doing inside of a while loop Usually, you kind of know that information, you know how much you have, so you just naturally use a for loop instead of a while loop. Okay, so now that we have a basic idea of what a nested loop looks like, let's apply it and do a quick example. So I'm gonna erase this, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna show you this little pyramid of zeros. And we want to be able to print this pyramid of zeros out using nested loops. So I'm gonna drag this back over here and I'm gonna comment it so we can use this as a guide. I'll also move this down just a bit and then we can start writing some code. So the first thing we want is we want to take a look at what we got. We have seven lines, okay? So we want to print a loop probably seven times. I'm gonna say range is zero to seven. So that's our outer loop, we're gonna print these zeros on each line. We're going to do seven lines. And this first is actually uh, seven characters. See, seven characters selected. So this first zero is printed seven spaces out to the right. And this next one is six. 
and then five, then four, and three, and two, and then nothing. All right, so we want to be able to print that zero all the way out to the right. So to do that, I'm going to print seven spaces in here. So four J in range zero to seven. And then I'm going to print uh, a space. Now remember, a print statement uses an end line. So if I do print this, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of spaces in between my zeros. I'll show you what that looks like and then we'll fix it. So I put a zero here. Now you're saying print seven spaces, da, 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 print my zero and we're good, right? So maybe you make this mistake, maybe you don't. Uh, you print it and you notice, wait a second, all my zeros are just zero and then seven spaces right after it. So how do you fix that? Well, you take this and if you remember, you put end is equal to nothing. And end is a variable that is part of the print function that will tell it if end is equal to zero, that means our end is equal to nothing. That means change what used to be this, a new line character. If you remember the escape codes, it used to be a new line character, but now it's nothing. So that means no, no hitting enter at the end of my print statement. So it doesn't go to the new line. It just stays on the same line. So now it's going to print seven and then we'll print a zero. So if I do it like this, we should see seven zeros, seven spaces out to the right. And we do, there is our seven zeros, seven spaces out to the right, so seven, seven, seven. But that's not what we want. We need this pyramid looking thing. So actually, let, first let's try to get the, the left side of the pyramid and see how I can reduce the number of spaces each time the print statement goes. So. Right now it's running seven times each line. So on the first line we want seven, but on the second line, when i is equal to one, we want this seven to be equal to six. So how do you change that? Well, if i is equal to one, and we want this seven now to be six, what happens when i is equal to two? Well, when i is equal to the this line here, which is actually the third line or the third number, zero, one, two, so we want it here, this line is gonna be five spaces. And then when i is equal to three, we gonna, we're gonna want four spaces and so on. So actually what we can do is just subtract i each time this goes. So when we start this up, zero, seven minus i. I'm gonna put that like that. When i equals zero, we're gonna get seven spaces. When i is equal to one, this loop comes in and this value changes to six spaces and then five spaces and then four and then three and then two, one and zero. Basically when i is equal to the uh, our last value, uh, this is gonna run one time. And when it finishes, we'll be good to go. So let's run this and we get all the way out. I and mean, there's gonna be one little space here because this only goes to six, so seven minus uh, six gives you one, which means it's going to run one time. We could fix that, but we're just going to leave it as is right now. It, it's it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so that's good. We've got we've got the left side of the pyramid that looks nice, but now we need the inside of the pyramid. How do we how do we make that? Well, the first line has one zero. The next line has three, five, and seven, and nine, and so on. So it looks like it's printing out the odd number of zeros per line. So we want to we want to go one, three, and so on. Now we want that to be based on these numbers up here. So I don't want to just code it in for a pyramid of seven. Maybe later on I want to make my pyramid even bigger. So I'm gonna put another loop here, four k in range of zero to what? Well, this first line, I really just want one, right? So I just want it to be one, and I want to print one zero, and I actually want the same thing, I don't want it to end, but after I printed my zeros, then I want a new line. So I don't want to actually print a new line until the very, very last thing. I want to start with one zero, then I want to make three zeros and five and then seven. 
but I don't want to make a new line after that. So now I've changed the printing of zero to be the same as the spaces. So there's no new line at the end. All right, so let's think about this for a second. How can I change this number so that I get something here? So for, if I is zero, I still want there to be a one. So there needs to be one. But on the second one, which is the when i is equal to 1, I want this to be equal to 3 here. I want to print three zeros. So if i is equal to 1, and I have plus 1, I guess I could add another 1, and that might work. Let's see what happens when I do i plus 1. Okay, ah, i plus 1 gives us the left half of the pyramid. All right, well, that's, that's pretty interesting. How can I get the right half of the pyramid? Okay, well, the you have a couple options here. One, you could make a new for loop, another for loop, and print it off to the right. Or you could figure out how to make this count up to an odd number. Okay, so think about it for a second. If I put, if i is equal to zero, okay, so i is equal to zero first, and I have plus one, Let's say I do 2 times i plus 1. Okay, let's see what that would do. Uh, so on this first line, i is 0, so it's going to be plus 1, so I'll print 1, 0. On the next line, i is equal to 1, so 2 times i is 2, plus 1 is 3. On the third line, i is equal to 2, so 2 times 2 plus 1 gives me 5, and so on all the way down to the bottom line. So now if I run this, I get a full pyramid. All right, pretty cool, right? Uh, the nice thing about this is that everything we did depends on i. This depends on i and this depends on i. I could have done this a different way where I just used values and said, uh, you know, maybe count by, I could use like a count by odd numbers. And it would go up and it would count by odd numbers up to a number that I specified, and then it would be done. But here, everything depends on i, which means I can come in here, and if I change i, all of these other things will also change, okay? The only difference is, this is seven, so I'd have to fix that in order to make it not seven as well. So if I change this to 10 and 10, or even better, if I said pyramid width, is equal to 10, and I change pyramid width, and this to pyramid width. Now I can run this in any size pyramid that I want, I will be able to get just based on the number I put in here. Okay, so you can do this in a lot of different ways. I can make an upside down pyramid, I can make a right side up pyramid, I could make any weird looking thing in here. I could use this and I could put, I could use this as a pyramid of numbers and you could add and move down, okay? Uh, so you can make Pascal's triangle and other things like that. All right, so this is a kind of a complex example. So maybe this seems a little bit confusing to you. Uh, I would take a look at this code, type it in, play with it yourself. See if you can make different types of pyramids. Maybe try to make an upside down pyramid. In fact, if you look in the exercises, just do the exercises and you'll actually see most of these examples. Uh, it's, it's really good to understand how nested loops work and how to get things to work how you want. And even more importantly, how to make the code short, concise, and understandable and adjustable. By adjusting this, I can now make any size pyramid I want. It's actually very, very, uh, it's very convenient. It's very functional code. Okay, so uh, this is the end of loops. Take a look at the exercises that I just said, practice, then move on to the next section where I'm going to show you a whole bunch of useful functions that we're going to be using in the uh, following tutorials, really. Okay, all right, thanks for watching. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section in YouTube or on the website leftpeel.com. Thanks for watching and see you soon.